Good afternoon. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, yay, welcome. Thank you, Max. Uh, good afternoon. My name is John Bracken. I'm the Vice President for Technology Innovation at Knight Foundation. And good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Preston, the VP of Journalism at Knight Foundation. And it sounds like we have a raucous crowd here. Before we get too raucous, I want to remind you, we are streaming live on Facebook Live. So you have an audience of, uh, a virtual audience that's not here with us. So hi, we'll, we'll, we'll try to speak up for you. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, and thank you to Paley Center for having us. We're calling today 10 Years Forward and Back, and we wanted to talk about what we've learned and what we're hoping for about the state of the internet. Um, sort of the excuse for this conversation is that it's 10 years since we announced the first winners of the Night News Challenge, and we use that as an excuse to bring together the 13 amazing set of speakers that you're going to see today. Um, as some of you may recall, 2007 was marked the change in how we used the internet and, and how the internet worked for the purposes of social conversations. Um, it's the year that Twitter launched at South by Southwest. It's the year that Facebook really grew out of, out of uh, college dorm rooms. It's the year YouTube hosted the first presidential debates. Um, and of course, it's the year that the, this thing was launched, the iPhone, which really changed a lot of the way we do work. Um, and it was the year that Knight Foundation started the, the Knight News Challenge. Um, a lot of us had a strong sense of optimism about what the role of technology and the internet could be for building community, for strengthening the way we communicate with one another. And I think more recently, a lot of us have focused more on the concerns, the, the downsides, the worries about false information, about propaganda, about bullying and hate. And the shift we've seen from spaces of civic discourse that were open and public to those that are closed and private. So in 2007, one of the wonderful things about the News Challenge is that it also changed philanthropy. Because what it did was that it opened Knight Foundation's doors to ideas from, from all over. And the question then was, how might uh, people and, and what projects might really serve, how might we use digital media technology to really serve uh, people in communities in very much the way that newspapers did in the 20th century. And as John said, it was a period of uh, tremendous optimism about uh, open data, about the internet, and so many of the great ideas that have come out of the news challenge today um, served the optimism, and what we've seen is now many of the ideas, our most recent challenge, was aimed at helping address some of the troubling aspects of, of the internet. So we'll get to talk about both sides of the, um, of the spectrum today. Before we do that, we're gonna do something, you know, we, you guys who are here physically saw the Wheel of Fortune uh, 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 exhibition upstairs. So today, before, we're gonna announce some winners. Uh, um, we're really excited to announce eight grants to past News Challenge winners, but we really wanna double down on the success that they've been having. So the first one we want to announce is to code for science and society to support DAT, decentralized data services for academic and government institutions. <laughs> Max Johnson is here. And next, we want, next, we want to uh, announce the Columbia Journalism School to enable journalists to produce data journalism with technical skills. Jonathan Data and society to support the Disinformation Action Lab to analyze and develop solutions to propaganda and disinformation threats. <laughs> Janet Hayden. And to document cloud. Woo! To uh, Ted Hunt and Aaron Pilhofer and Document Cloud, which has helped so many news organizations around the country, around the world, really get out uh, information in a, in a user-centric way. Emblematic group 
to support the use of photogrammetry whew, to create 3D models for journalism VR projects. Yay! And next, M Relief to make it easier for Americans to check their eligibility and apply for government programs. Yay, Rose! Woo. Yay, Rose. Shift design to support the national rollout of History Pin Story Box, which helps local libraries host community engagement events. Yay. John Voss is here. And lastly, and not least, CO2040 to support organizational growth and sustainability as part of its efforts to promote equity and in inclusion in the tech industry. And I should say that the $3 million gift that Knight is rewarding is part of a $5.6 million investment that they're announcing today from an array of funders. So big congratulations to all the work CO2040 is doing.